welcome to another episode of Be Free, Be Fun, Be Fearless. I am Dr. Rena al Falaki, and I'm so stoked to be joined by my friend John Christian today. So we've just spent half an hour for me trying to work out how to tell you what John is and what he does. <laughs> and I'm probably still going to trip over, but we'll see how I do. So he is a human performance improvement strategist. He is president of Black Point Standard Consulting Group, of which uh, Zerkas is part of that. So we're going to talk about Zerkas uh, and, and what that actually does. He helps people focus, um, helps people with focus, flow, and freedom in challenging environments. He is the creator of the Challenge Method, author of the Five Challenges, uh, and also a creator and of Conscious Human Performance. So we have got a lot to talk about, John. Absolutely, and I, I didn't, I didn't open so, myself yeah. though. I didn't do too badly. No, I think you did perfect. It was awesome. <laughs> because everything is perfect. <laughs> Welcome, John, it's great to see you. You've just been you've just been out surfing or swimming? The hair is wet, you tell me? Yeah, well, actually I got some surfing in yesterday. I brought the kids out and we had a good time. And then I was doing a little bit of running and, and routine on the beach. So doing a little bit of run, a little bit of meditation, a swim, and the water's about 50 degrees now. And I just got back and my hair is still wet. <laughs> Hence the hat. That's a one one thing I am env envious of you being where you are, as opposed to here in the autumnal, uh, cold uh, UK, where far away from the ocean. So no matter. So yeah. tell me, John, human human improvement strategist. What what is what does that mean? Uh, that basically means navigating this wonderful, challenging world in a way where it doesn't feel so challenging. Um, it's about looking at situation from a different standpoint. So human performance, it could be, you know, performance inside of your relationship, inside of your physical well-being. So there's multiple areas to look at. And it's kind of picking that apart and then figuring out how to optimize our lives, both physically and mentally. Okay. So give us an example. All right. So you know how... Um, when you're looking to make a challenging decision that might be a little bit fearful, you know, you're, you're thinking, Hmm, I don't know if I can do this. So what we do is we optimize the mindset in that process and connect the physical experience. And for me, what it was when I was making a transition from the banking industry into this new realm of coaching and consulting, um, I was very terrified to make a decision uh, to leave that job, that secure job. So what I did was I went out and I did skydiving and I jumped out of a plane and I wrote my own obituary before I jumped out of the plane. And what that allowed me to do is have a more high performance mindset in making decisions. So once you do something like that, you know, picking up the phone and talking to somebody or, you know, taking a leap of faith in life is a lot more easy to do. So that's what I mean by, you know, performance improvement is uh, connecting the physical and mental uh, experiences so that you can navigate the challenging situations in life much more easily um, than normal. You know, kind of if you're built up the uh, feel resilience, you know, in, in, your, in your life, it's really an amazing process. And I think it's important to say that, that the challenging situations don't have to be massive ones. It may not be, you know, a huge career transition it could be it could be anything sometimes it could even just be finding that day-to-day -day life itself is challenging mm -hmm. yeah well for some people it might be going up and talking to somebody at a bar you know they might have anxiety around relationship i've worked with people they get up the courage just to go and talk to people in a bar which is almost feeling like jumping out of a plane sometimes that much fear in, in that rejection so yeah it really depends on the individual what that that process looks like and you and, and you really only have to challenge yourself four uh, percent more than you normally do you don't have to go extreme but there's a four percent challenge theory that if you challenge yourself four percent more than you normally do you're going to grow in what, some way shape or form i've got two things to say to that one is do people actually still walk up to people in bars i would have thought it was all <laughs> online nowadays <laughs> no, it's just hey, swiping, right? challenge <laughs> Do I message them, don't I? But the other thing, okay, so where does the 4% come from and how can you measure that? 
Uh, the 4% comes from, uh, so uh, Stephen Kotler is a, uh, one of the leading researchers in flow state. And what he did was he did a, a study with uh, individuals and putting them into a focused state of, of operation with different tasks and things like that. And, you know, it's a rule of thumb. I don't know if you, think that you can really uh, like measure 100% what 4% is for you, um, but it's, it's, it's enough to put you in a, a stressful situation. Like, um, for instance, when, when you do say a, a breathing or, or if we use like holding your breath for an example, right? You can hold your breath for 10 seconds and that's not challenging, right? You can hold your breath for 25 or, or 30 seconds. That's starting to get challenging. But maybe your threshold is at 30, 30, uh, 30 seconds. But then you can continue to hold your breath, you know, another 4% of that 30%. And then you're, you're starting to inch up to the threshold. So it's really depending on the activity and it's more a feel of how much you're challenging yourself based on maybe adrenaline, you know, what, what's coming up, how much your heart is beating. There's a lot of different factors in determining that, but you know, when you're at your regular threshold and you know, when you push just over it, so over a little bit more, you start to feel like, hey, this is this is a little bit challenging, you know, like, you know, we, we were talking about different scenarios and you definitely can feel when you're, when you're outside your comfort zone. Yeah, so it's the it's the old, you know, the old adage of, you know, when you stretch an elastic band long enough, because you are stretching yourself, stepping out of your comfort zone, then you never return back to your original dimensions, mm -hmm. but you've got to be prepared to to take the push. Yeah, and that's a good point. Uh, the rubber band analogy. Um, the rubber band analogy is, if you're stretching it too much, and this is the same thing with stretching beyond your your comfort zone, is that you know if you're if I'm taking somebody out into into waves, for instance, going out and surfing, and the waves are very very big, you're not going to want to stretch the rubber band or bring them out into the peak of a you know a 15 or 20 foot wave right off the bat, you know, they're going to get scared. They're going to be terrified and they'll never, never do it again. So yeah, that's an important point is to like, maybe have them go on the, the, uh, the, the wave, the not so far in the see deep in the wave more in the channel and then move them out a little bit, move them out, move them out. Same point thing with this challenge methodology is you bring up the good point of, of different thresholds for different people, different physical abilities for different people. So, so understanding that person's rubber band is very important in the process. That's why it's a, you know, a personal process that people go through. Okay, it just sounds amazing. So mm -hmm. that helps your focus, your flow and your freedom. And you know my word, my favorite word, my top value is freedom. Mm -hmm. yep. Be free, be fun, be fearless. Yes. So yeah. how does this high performance, you're telling me I can be pushed out of my comfort zone and yet I'm going to feel free. Is mm -hmm. it is it like the jumping out of the airplane free? Terrifying? Well, or is it a fun free? It, it's it's all the above. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us. Yep. So, so the focus piece of it, there's there's um a lot of a lot of people in the world, including myself, that um, sometimes get sucked up into their mind. You know, they're operating from their head, and the, the focus piece is to get people outside of their their head and into their bodies. And then when you're you're in that state where you're not 100% in your head, uh, you're not 100% in your body, but you're in this like in between area, operating from your heart, your focus increases. Um, and part of the process that people go through uh, is to get fully aligned with things that they want to be doing in this world. So, for instance, writing their obituary is one of the challenges uh, that I have people do. And uh, you know, that focus, once you get that, that focus inside of what you want to be doing long term, the decisions every single minute of the day become much more easier. And now you have this physical experience that you had, you went outside your comfort zone, and then time starts to disappear. And before you know it, you're, you know, you're, whatever you're working on is complete. So that's the focus piece of it, is that full alignment, and then the tools and techniques and strategies to, to be confident in moving towards that direction. Instead of like, well, maybe I should be doing this or maybe I should be doing that. It helps you make decisions in an instant instead of ruminating on them. And then before you know it, you're 
uh, you know, 10 years down the road in a career that you're not aligned with because you're not focused or confident in your decision making. Mm -hmm. uh, the flow piece comes into it is, is in setting the time for yourself, setting the space for yourself so that there aren't any inter in interruptions. Um, and you're putting yourself in a higher, your brain waves, you know, you're slowing them down, you're putting yourself into this, you know, kind of uh, beta brain wave where you're going through and, and shifting gears actually. So you're creating the space, you're slowing your heart down and you're going into the task with no distractions, no alarms on your phone, no emails. So that uh, creates this flow of, of, uh, of thought and you know, we'll get woo-woo for a little bit, like the universe coming into you, right? And, and leading the way. And the freedom piece is now all those things are in place and you're feeling, feeling more free. You're not feeling anxiety. Like when I do my routine in the morning, um, you know, what I had to overcome is the, the idea of, you know, emails coming in or people trying to contact me, like this feeling of like, oh, like there's all this stuff that needs to be done, but I really want to do the self-care. So it's being able to step into the self-care and, and to do things for yourself without feeling guilty or without feeling anxiety around all these other things that are happening in, in the world, in, in your life, which, you know, if, if you, if you're not fully tapped into that, you're doing the self-care, but it, it's really not a hundred percent free, you know? Yeah. So identifying what the need is in that and where the, where the priority is. Mm-hmm. So I have I have a I, I, I have the concept kind of imagine a bit of a crossword of the word opt in and nail it. Mm -hmm. So the way I work with my clients is okay, if you decide you want to do something, then what's the opt in for it? So we look at okay, what's the opportunity? Uh, what purpose is it fulfilling in you? How tangible is it in the first place? What does your intuition say about it? And once you know about that, then you can take the steps that involve nailing it. And mm -hmm. then to nail it is what what you were saying you know what need is it actually fulfilling let's really engage with that need what is your attitude towards it so we've got to get the mental bit right the mindset what is the integrity it has to be integral to part of you align with your values and so on it has to be limitless you've got to get out the limiting beliefs which is the fear piece of course and then back again to intuition and tangibility of you know let's ground it but what does your intuition tell you and for me yeah that for me that's always my my biggest piece that I try to guide people to because it's often the the key to unlocking so much is knowing that the universe or whatever we want to call it our higher self our higher coach that guidance is always there for us and I always harp on about it's all very well visualizing and affirmations and that that brings your focus but of course you have to take the actions and sometimes you have no idea what actions to take or you rely on other people telling you what to do and actually when you learn to train your intuition and and allow be open and curious to allow that guidance to drop in and know what what's right for you and, and, and which direction to go in. Yeah, that intuition conversation is so important. Um, and most people aren't able to hear it. You know, they're not able to hear it. And these processes allow you to step into that, you know, and um, you, you can hear the intuition, like in the, in the morning, if you wake up, and like somebody comes to your, your mind, it's like, why is that person coming to my mind? But if you're jumping out of bed, you know, you're grabbing your, your breakfast, whatever it is, and, and like parts or whatever, whatever you're putting in your body and you're running out the door, um, you know, you're, you're missing that, you know? So the intuition piece uh, is so important uh, and allowing yourself to pull yourself out of your, your daily comfort zone, your daily routine, Doing some of these these conscious human performance methodology uh, processes, it really does bring awareness to that, and you're like, oh, I'm, I'm not listening to my intuition, or I hear it, and I'm ignoring it. But let me set some time aside to really uh, step into it. Yeah, and I think it's also important. I have some people who 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 are very good at meditations, and they can get to that state, they can open themselves up, but they don't know how to get the that intuitive advice and to, what we forget sometimes is about needing to ask the questions which is where I advise people if you want to do affirmations then do what I call inquisitive affirmations so you're you're mm -hmm. you're, you're putting out the affirmation okay you know yeah I want to I want to quit my job and start something else but instead of I will I will be quitting my job you know I'm telling my mind it's going to happen it's kind of like, it's more a 
what do I need to help me quit my job? So you're, mm -hmm. you're putting out there that you, it's a desire that you have and you're asking for the guidance of what needs to happen to make that happen. Yeah, yeah. And, and the big question for me was, is, uh, you know, we were talking about that question my daughter asked me. And, you know, she said, Dad, do you love what you do? And I couldn't honestly look in the eyes and tell her I did. But the thing was, is that the question I asked myself is, who do I need to be, come or be in order to step in to lead my kids and to lead them by example? And that's what started me on this path to jumping out of planes and Spartan races and tough mutters and all these insane things that I've done to push myself out of my comfort zone to be comf comfortable in my own body lead my kids to show them that hey you know anything is possible um it was almost like yeah it's it's the stepping into who who do i need to be who do i want to be you know it's not not a need it's like who do i want to be and what actions do i want to take in order to, to do that uh and that changed my life forever it's amazing yeah, I've done the tough mudders, but I haven't done the jumping out of the airplane. But I really want to. Yeah, the it, the uh, the funny thing is, is I was terrified the first first round, uh -huh. and uh, like it was just pure adrenaline, and uh, it was insane. And I actually had a group of people doing it, and they were writing their obituaries uh, at the same time. But the second time I did it, it was a completely different experience. So the guy after we did it, I just I I just part of the process is surrender, right? And being feeling com uncomfortable being uh, out of control, like not in control or trying to control everything. Like we, everybody has this achievement mindset and like letting go. And so the second time I, I was completely relaxed and just like looking around. First time I was screaming my head off and like, <laughs> <laughs> and then uh was, and then the guy pulled the cord he's like hey you want to steer for a little bit steering the, the thing i got down he goes you know what you, you i jump with thousands of people and you were one of the most relaxed people i've ever jumped with in in the thousands of people and it was that that surrendering uh that um so when you do these things anything that you do first it can be terrifying the second time it's a, it can be a completely different experience because you've overcome the fear or you're not letting mm -hmm. the fear get to you. You're more present. You're more yeah. open. You're mm -hmm. experiencing it for exactly. the beauty it could actually be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I had to take it to the extreme. <laughs> okay. But not everybody does. <laughs> well, you know, the because um, the, 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 the image I use for this, this podcast is someone jumping out of a parachute, is a parachute. Uh, yeah. And for me, that symbolizes you know, some fun fearlessness and mm -hmm. a sense of freedom. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, well, also anytime you make a transition or, or at least what it felt like for me and many of the people that I work with is it's almost like there is this leap of faith into the unknown and you don't know if you're going to land on your feet and, and you can take the safe way, which in hindsight, I probably would have put together a few steps, you know, in the process of me transitioning um, because I've had to go through all sorts of different challenging hardships with my family as a result, because I was so burnt out and I was like, I need to get out. So I just pull, pull, pump. <laughs> and I was like, you know, maybe hitting some, some things on the way down, but, uh, it does feel like almost weightless when you do that. And you're like, uh, yeah, I have, I have nothing to grip onto. So when you take those leaps of faith, um, it can be in relationship, it can be in your health, it can be in, in your career, um, it could be in the work that you're doing on yourself. It can be, it's terrifying. And I think that's why it's important to um, have either an individual or a group of people that understand, because when you do this type of transition, if you're doing it in a way that is um, a little bit outside the norm, you're going to get people that are going to say, well, what are you doing? Like, why aren't you just following the herd or why aren't you doing this or that and then you start to question yourself so that, that's you know yeah that, that feeling I'm, sounds like you're familiar with it <laughs> yeah so you what I'm hearing you say is you know we do we need to not not only surround ourselves with the people that say we want to support but 
when you're going through that process, there is an element of, of raising your consciousness, which of course we're going to get into. Mm -hmm. becoming aware, it's the awareness piece, like you said, of becoming aware of yourself. And so it really helps if you can surround yourself with like-minded people who can support you and pull you in their direction rather than the other people who may be pulling you down and appealing or, you know, managing to kind of tap into the, the strings that are attached to the fear. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a lot of isolation in that process too, mm -hmm. feeling alone and, and isolated uh, in that transition and not really knowing, you know, what, what to do. Um, you know, as, as looking over some of your background and story and you you talk about that, you know, about knowing that you wanted to make a change, but you weren't sure, like none of the books were really doing it for you and, and, and some of the, the mentors and things like that. And it's like, even, even with the best mentors and the books in the world, it's, it's, it's a very difficult transition and being committed to it is important. Yeah, I mean, I think the bit of advice I would offer if I think of my, my own transition, I mean, again, again, it's the create certainty and uncertainty. So I was lucky to still have, a, you know, an income. It isn't, I didn't have to just stop one thing to do another. But it was, it was what made me feel alive as opposed to feeling dead inside. Mm -hmm. and then that's my pull but very alone because there was nobody I mean it's now now I do what I do I gather wonderful people like you as friends and it's great <laughs> but at the time I wasn't surrounded by that whatsoever so you it's it, you feel like you've got this ton of people who are disapproving who just don't get what you're doing and yet it's a calling mm -hmm. yeah and, and when you get down to it um you said feeling alive so there was an exercise I did years ago uh, by a, a very, very uh, wonderful mentor of mine, and it's called the feeling powerful exercise. And one of the things that they had us do is to uh, capture what we wanted to do, create in others. Like, what is that feeling that you want to create in others? And for me, it was feeling, helping people feel alive and awakened inside. So everything that I do, everything that I put my heart into you know, that, that's what I'm looking for to do, to do for people is help them feel alive and awakened. So we had to actually, um, we had a whole room of like 25 people and we had to get up in front of the room and then like do a talk and then people would stand up if they're starting to feel alive and awakened. And there was people like breaking down in tears and like, it was, it was challenging, but it was wonderful. So one guy, there was one guy that was a, a holdout. And so I was like, all right, I was like, I want you to get up and we're going to run around this building. So we got up and we ran up the door around the hotel building back in the thing. Are you feeling alive and awake now? He's like, I'm feeling alive and awake. And everybody's like, yeah, that's great. So, yeah, I mean, uh, aligning yourself, it, it's not always about the thing that you do, but sometimes it's about the feelings that is created inside of you and inside of others that that's most important regardless, you know, there, there's, there's people that are, you know, feel fulfillment in being a mechanic and working on cars and, and doing so. So it's like, you don't have to be doing like all this crazy stuff in the world uh, to feel fulfilled. Yeah. 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 It's, and it's, it's the energy piece as well, isn't it? It is, it is the energy piece that fulfillment comes with a, a particular level, level of energy. So, which mm -hmm. I know we're going to go into, but yep. I want to talk about your book because mm -hmm. you've mentioned the word challenge a lot of times. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> And obviously you've written this, this wonderful book, The Five Challenges, and you are creator of The Challenge Method. So how about you share a bit of that with us? Yeah, so that was something that um, was placed on my heart a few years back. And I had been learning all these different strategies in, in, in my life to transition and to really operate in a different way. And I wanted to capture this book First of all, I was like, you know, I just want to write this book. It's okay if nobody reads it but my kid. I was like, as long as I can pass this down to my kid. And I realized that there was this whole journey that I went on. So I wrote it and it was a challenge, right? Like if, if you've, you've written some books, right? And anybody who sat down to actually put their thoughts into a book, um, it's extremely challenging to organize. And I had all these different stories. And so... I said, what is the best way that I can bring people through this process and reach more people, you know, because, as you know, we're only one person and um, working one to one is, is great, but it's difficult to uh, reach more and more people. So I wanted to put this book out there so that it would give people a bridge from where they might be at um, currently into this new way of consciously living their life. And so it brings them through five challenges that, that I went through. 
that it is impossible to go through the, the, the challenges and do the work without shifting your mindset and experiencing more focus, flow, and freedom in your life. Um, so it gives them that, that permission, you know, to take those leaps of faith, to do things a little bit differently, um, and then gives them also the support, you know, the community um, to, to connect with as well. So I wanted to reach back, you know, myself 10 years ago and give, give him the book that would have made things a little bit less uh, terrifying <laughs> to make the transition. Um, but yeah, and then it's just been an amazing journey. So it's called The Five Challenges. And um, yeah, it's, it's, I've gotten some pretty good feedback so far uh, with, with the, uh, the book. You've had some great feedback. You've had some wonderful feedback. And it's not, it's not a really long book as well, which makes it very readable, very easy, very to the point. What, um, are you able to share what the, the five challenges are to give us a little teaser? Um, yeah, I'll give a little bit of a teaser. Okay. So um, the first challenge revolves around full alignment and realizing that our lives are not necessarily, uh, you know, everybody thinks that they have all the time in the world, but we don't know when our time is going to be up. And a lot of times we're making, putting things off and not doing things that we really desire to do. So the first challenge is actually to write your own obituary and jump out of an airplane. So uh, once you do that, you know, it, you start making decisions as if your life and lively to put dependent on it based on that obituary. And it's extremely, extremely powerful to look at that once you have that and you can tell like, is my, are my decisions aligned with this thing that I wanna create? It's the thing that I want to, you know, uh, I want to, it's life I want to live. So it gets you fully aligned and making decisions. The second one is around um, commitment. I think the second one's commitment. Um, so the commitment is a commitment statement. A lot of times we say that we are committed to things, but we don't necessarily do the things that we're committed to. What I learned in commitment was um, that if I don't follow through on the things I say I'm going to do, then they're never going to get done. And so the challenge around that is uh, doing an endurance race. And so when you register for an endurance race, you're committing to that. And you know that there's going to be a world of hurt if you don't train for that. So that's, yeah. that's one of the second challenges. Yeah. I remember the horrendous pain in my legs after my first tough mudder. It was mm -hmm. just, it was just in, insane. You know, I had to go to work the next day and I had about a 200 meter walk to go and call patients from the waiting room. And I, it, it didn't happen that day. I could just open the door and shout. <laughs> mm -hmm. It was painful. Second time around, no problem. Fine. Nice. <laughs> those are those are the I'll give I'll give those two um, and then the other ones are are around you know uh, creating your why plan um, there's a challenge to do a solo uh, experience solo adventure experience mm -hmm. kind of going out on your own uh, on your own and finding yourself mm -hmm. um, and then there's uh, you know kind of creating this unlimited reality uh, experience for yourself where uh, those feelings we were talking about instead of having to go and do all these crazy things to feel this you're able to then go and um, bring that into your present moment, you know? So it's removing that gap of not having in the now. So at, at this point in, in my life, after evolving through these processes, um, you know, I've gotten to a point where I can like, grab a cup of tea, right? And watch the steam come off and feel like this joy and happiness as if I'm on the top of the mountain, you know? So it all comes full circle is that, you know, this, these adventures and these experiences are all around us. And that's what I learned through that process is that, you know, um, you don't always have to go extreme to feel this happiness, joy and, and fulfillment in life and freedom. Um, so that's going to be kind of the next evolution of this conversation uh, inside the book series, which is the five challenges. And I'm going to be working on a conscious human performance book, which is more uh, the conscious conversation, which after I did all the extreme things and I got 
into the uh, consciousness realm and looking at how I'm operating at different levels in different situations in my relationships, in my career, in my health, and then in my mindset. Because I think it's really important to say, you know, you don't have to be a, a crazy adventurous like you uh, <laughs> to, you know, to set yourself these kind of challenges. And sometimes it isn't just, you know, for you, it's an example of how you might challenge yourself through that physical, through a physical experience. For others, it might be through a mental experience or an emotional experience or through needing to have a conversation and overcome a massive fear in that way to, to be able to say, feel the commitment piece or yep. something along those those lines yeah and and a lot of people that um read the book uh might feel as if they can't accomplish the ones that are in there you know a lot of people are gonna be like oh well there's no way i'd ever do that i can't do that um and i was thinking about that conversation and, and just just to bring it into focus you know on some of those those uh, spartan races or tough wonders or or different uh endurance races that i was uh, doing you know, I did see a guy uh, with no legs going through this, this obstacle course, dragging himself through the mud, and he finished, you know, and, and then there's a guy that was, you know, well, well overweight, and he was pushing through. So um, if that's resistance that comes up for people when they go through it, just know that there's absolutely, if you have the will and the determination, uh, it doesn't matter how long it takes, you'll be able to, to, to do any of those challenges in the book. I think it's like, uh, you've really got to engage with your, with why you're doing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What sprang to mind, John, is you need to, to progress from the book to running um, like a, a five challenges weekend and set it all up for people. So they do all mm -hmm. the training and then they come along <laughs> and yeah. then, and then, you know, over the course of a weekend or maybe a week, a one week holiday, the five challenges ho holiday, adventure holiday. I think that would be awesome. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I've run every single thing that you've seen that, that's in the book. I've run group experiences for. Mm -hmm. um, and then also I am uh, putting together a retreat so, um, for Costa Rica. And the Costa Rica, you know, it's a, there's four different uh, categories or five different categories to go, us, go over in five days. And what I want, what I want to be doing, and I've done this uh, in the past, and we did it in Colorado in 2019. We summited a 12,500 foot peak, uh, but it's going down uh, to Costa Rica and basically getting um, a bunch of vehicles with, you know, pop-up tents and things like that, the freedom piece. So I don't, I like, it's fun to go to the five-star resorts and all these other things, but that's not really where the, the growth happens. Um, but yeah, there's, there's going to be, um, as soon as we get out of this uh, kind of COVID -y, uh, time, uh, you know, there's, there's a retreat that is available through Zerkers that we're going to be bringing people down to Costa Rica and putting them through these, uh, these mindset shifts and, you know, doing some zip lining and potentially some bungee jumping and surfing and all sorts of different experiences and then coming together and debriefing um, on those experiences as well. I want to come just okay. for the fun. <laughs> It's my kind of, that's my kind of trip. I absolutely love that kind of thing. Yeah, I, you know what? A lot of the time people think of retreats as yoga retreats. So I'm doing, a, again, COVID, when we get out of COVID, a, a walking and walking and writing retreat. And yeah, just walking, but we, we're not, you know, we're not talking, yeah. again, it's the challenging walking. Let's, let's get you out into rugged, pure nature and let's get you walking distances and let's get you walking uphill and let's get you actually the challenge of, one of your, your challenges of the, of the quiet walking, the mindful walking, this is not to sit and talk, this is, and, and actually not even to talk to yourself, but mm -hmm. learning to be, learning to be present, not hearing a bird and interpreting it with your, in your brain to think, oh, that's, that must be that kind of bird, or not seeing a tree swaying and processing it in your head, thinking, oh, how beautiful that tree is. Actually, you know, to be truly present in the moment, that nanosecond, is not mm -hmm. even to have the thought, the thought interpretation of what you're seeing. So yeah, the, the challenge of walking and then uh, obviously channeled writing, which I know you've had a bit of experience with as well. Oh yeah, absolutely. There is a there is a funny. Uh, we had a, a retreat up in uh, Colorado that I ran. It was uh, thirty five people, and we broke out into groups. And one of the things that the exercises that, that I did with them was called Monkey Mind. Mm -hmm. And so we were in a line of uh, I think it was eight people, 
right? And then we just, uh, first person in line had to say whatever came to their mind, anything. They couldn't filter it. And then the next person went, next person went, next person went. And so we did this for about like 10 minutes and like things that were coming out of people's minds, like mouths were just like hilarious. There's so many different voices, you know, um, that pop up and uh, just to kind of verbalize it in a group, like, oh, wow, like th these are all things that are conversations that are happening underneath the surface of, of uh, the group was really, really cool. So yeah, monkey mind. <laughs> yeah, I like that. I like that one. That sounds like, again, a lot of fun. Mm-hmm as well as Absolutely. a lot of insight. So you also have, I love these five challenges, I really do. So the challenge method mm -hmm. is based around that? Yes, the challenge method is basically connecting a physical event with a mental mindset shift. So um, I do it either, either in a group or um, work with an individual one-on-one -on -one and talk about, you know, well, what is it that you're focused on? What is it that you want to achieve or, or work on? And they might say, well, I'm having trouble, um, let's say, I'm having trouble connecting with my, my wife, you know? So then we would uh, put together a, an experience, for instance, uh, rock climbing or uh, indoor rock climbing. Uh, when people belay, there's a trust factor. So sometimes in relationships, you know, there's a lack of trust because maybe you haven't done something uh, or you... Uh, you know, you've kind of broken that down in the relationship. So what I would do is put together that experience for the individual couple so that they can rebuild that trust and feel the trust, you know, in that somebody holding that line for you. It's like, okay, like I'll be okay, you know, and you can trust me uh, in life, in our daily life, that I'll never let you fall, you know? So it is that extreme experience and that brings those couples together. So it just depends on what somebody's going through. Um, and what I've done is I've done a bunch of different physical experiences in order to bring um, those experiences to an individual individual situation, you know, because a lot of people will do the, the mindset shifts or the, or, you know, in a, in a container, uh, like you were talking about the retreats and things like that. People get stuck in these environments where they're not able to pull themselves mentally out of that state. So it gives them that space, like outside their home, outside their country, if they need to be like, oh, wow, like, I feel different. You know, I, I, I feel closer to my husband or my, my, my wife in the situation. And you can go back to that and be like, hey, you're creating a grounding experience. Remember when we did that, like rock climbing thing? Remember when we took that to Costa Rica and this happened? Like, yeah, you know, uh, you, you really do have my back, don't you? you know, even though you forgot to take out the garbage. <laughs> yeah, it's so true, it's so true. And also actually, I think in that, we do have to remember that where we create almost these false environments, mm -hmm. it's, they need to also learn the skills of how to bring that into their everyday life as well. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, there's so many, so many different opportunities to do that uh, on, in your daily life create those grounding experiences mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so you're going to you you change you change through the physical experience mm -hmm. by challenging yourself and then it's how to transition that experience and what you learn and really ground that mindset and then carry it through into the the transition that you want that's what i'm hearing you you mm -hmm. say yeah yeah and that, that's part of the reason why i go and, and uh recently since all the gyms closed down and things like that you know, why I'm doing this routine in the morning. Uh, well, actually, the reason personally I'm doing this routine in the morning is to practice consistency. So it's great for the body, it's great for the mind, but this this is about consistency. It's about resistance, you know, for, for the 30 pounds of weight that I put on back with a rucksack. You know, it's, it's, it's putting extra weight on myself um, in order to push through to do, stay consistent, even though uh, it's a challenging experience. And then being consistent, uh, doing the stretches and meditating and being consistent, you know, going in the water and, and um, you know, basically, you know, the 50 degree water, which is also very challenging to do. And then it becomes fun. Like you said, then it just if becomes 10, like um, 10, 10 degrees Celsius for those in uh, the other side of the pond. Mm -hmm. It's cold. Yeah. But, but then you just do it. And, and so that, that's 
what I'm personally working on with that my personal so, routine. So just, just run us through that routine because I, I, like I said, I was, I was, I was checking you out on Instagram yesterday, and I, was, I just sound, felt exhausted reading it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So this is this is this is what's worked for me, mm-hmm. uh, and everybody's different. Everybody's different with the routine, so you have to figure out what works best for you. But what I do is, is I get up in the morning and I take time to do the Wim Hof method. And doing that breathing, and I've, I've been able to get to, to a four-minute breath hold, and it just feels tremendous. Just taking that space, you know, not checking phones, not checking email, not rolling out of bed, and it's just that, that grounding uh, feeling in the morning. And then what I'll do is I'll get up and uh, grab some supplements. You know, I'll drink water and take vitamins, and uh, I do fasting, so I don't eat until about 11 or 12 o'clock. And a lot of people will say like, well, shouldn't I eat before I work out? Um, <laughs> well, you can, but I found it um, that I eat, have as much energy without uh, eating and uh, as I do when I do eat. I jump on the bike, I, I bike about a mile and then I get off the bike, uh, I have a 30 pound rucksack on my back and then I run the beach. And I did it initially without the rucksack on the beach um, and then I got to a point, I'm like, this isn't challenging enough. <laughs> so then I did a mile with the rock set on my back. But what I did was I, I, I stepped the, the distance. So what I do is I put waypoints. So I run to a point for the one day and then I'll run back and then I'll do like a telephone pole. I'm like, all right, I'm going to run this next telephone pole the next day and the next te- telephone pole and the next, next telephone pole. So before I know it, I'm like doubling the distance. And then I'll sit down and I'll do the meditation and some stretching and some uh, wave, wave key, um, which is um, a, a technique I've learned from Brad Gerlach, who surf 60 foot waves and help you overcome fear. And it's an amazing technique to get you grounded in your body and moving. And then I'll jump in the water, uh, go for a little bit of a swim, and then reverse the process and come back uh, home and start my day, you know, grab, um, you know, protein shake and banana and, and avocado and like just have my breakfast and my lunch in one meal and I'm, I'm good to go and I've really felt tremendous and I'm now uh, going to be turning 45 in April and I feel uh, as healthy as I did when I was 21. Amazing. Yeah. So that is amazing. Yeah. I mean, I'm in awe. I've, I've made, I've recommitted, I've recommitted to my like two, two hours of working out five times a week. So, you know, I've, I've, I've recommitted, I've engaged with my why, but, uh, but like I said, we don't, don't have quite so much fun outdoors here. So mm-hmm. um, let's go on because we, we kind of got this natural transition where we've talked about a high improvement strategy, what, what that involves, your know, human performance, the focus, the flow, the freedom. We've gone on to the five challenges and the, what the challenge method involves and what you're doing. And then there's this this final piece of conscious human performance. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the conscious human performance piece was really amazing um, to stumble on, and it had it has to do with those physical experiences that I that I did. So basically, the the process that I went through initially was, you know, I, I gained up the courage to go get mentored by one one childhood surfing heroes, Brad Gerlach, who was the number one surfer in the world, and surfs the sixty foot waves. That basically led me down to skydiving, bungee jumping, endurance races, all these different ways. And then that led me to backpacking three quarters of the coast of Costa Rica and surfing with crocodiles. And then getting into coaching and consulting when I came back and facilitating group adventure challenge experiences. I didn't know at the time when I was doing this, what a coach was. Um, I didn't know what learning development was. I didn't know what a consultant was. Um, and I didn't know what energy leadership was. So I wound up getting certified as an energy leadership master practitioner and learning more about uh, consciousness. And then I started to think about these physical experiences and how I was mentally operating through them uh, from a consciousness level. So like, as you're familiar with, we have different levels of consciousness, one through seven, you know, one being victim, uh, all the way up into a pure passion and, and creation. So, um, the conscious performance methodology basically uh, looks at four quadrants of someone's life. And I dissected this based on the work I've done with thousands of people and, and personally, and I broke it down into uh, actually five quadrants. And so conscious performance is number one is your consciousness. 
uh, your awareness. So how aware are you in your in your life and how you're showing up? And some people are completely oblivious and some people are aware of it and they don't care. They don't change it. And some people are aware and they want to make shifts and operate at a higher level um, of their awareness. The second one is your relationship. It's like, where are you consciously showing up in your relationship? And that's love and, and connection. And so, you know, you, you might feel like a victim, right? In, in your in your in your relationship or you may feel your love and joy uh, and then you have your contribution which is your career you know and maybe you're operating very confidently with relationship and it's you know pure joy and passion and then in the career you're feeling like repressed and and like you don't have a voice or you know you're not feeling or maybe you're being a helper right at level level four and you're going above and beyond and you have nothing left for your, your relationship. Mm -hmm. And then we have your, your commitment, which is your, um, your health and well-being. So maybe you have a tremendous career, you're completely burnt out, super wealthy, but you, you're just like not fulfilled. You know, there's a lot of people in the world like that. Um, and, and your relationship suffering as a result of it, you know? So, um, and you have your health. So you want to make sure that where you're operating on that scale. And then we take adventure, which is the, the fifth element of that. And like, are you challenging yourself? Are you, you know, doing things that are outside your comfort zone? Are you going and traveling and experiencing the world? So with that adventure factor, you know, you might have these other things, but you're not really experiencing the world and traveling and, and things like that. So it's basically bringing together the uh, physical at experiences uh, with the mental levels of consciousness and how you're operating in those five quadrants. So it's, it's consciousness, your uh, connection, relationships, contribution, which is your career and, and or business, and your commitment, which is your health and well-being. And then the fifth element of adventure, and based on 70 questions. And once you can answer those questions, and you scored points, it gives you an area to work on. And you can say, okay, so these four or five quadrants are in line. Well, let's look at your uh, relationship. You know, it looks like you're operating low here. What, what can we do to improve this? And then, okay, we know what we want to do to improve. What physical experience can we now bring in to increase the level of, of awareness and consciousness inside of your relationship? So it's a very dynamic process and multiple layers of, of uh, awareness inside of that, that model. So there's a, this assess it's an assessment you can do, this human conscious uh, performance is an assessment you can do, which is these 70 questions, like I said, looking at these four aspects of, 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 of your life, your consciousness, your contribution, your connection, your commitment, and obviously we've talked mm -hmm. about what they encompass, all surrounded, I see it, I, I picture it kind of as a blanket all around it of adventure, so the physical side, and so the assessment will show up your, perhaps your weaknesses or where you're perhaps not in alignment. You may be not honoring that part of yourself that's so important. And mm -hmm. then does the assessment, so obviously it flags up. So where, mm -hmm. how will someone know, okay, like it's flagged up, it's flagged up commitment. I'm, I'm not putting myself first. I'm not, I'm not looking after my health. Uh, so what do I need to do about it? Does it help you with action steps or is that where you then come in? Yeah. So, uh, for instance, let's just say, um, like, we'll say like well-being or, or health and fitness, right? So there's certain connect, certain, certain things that indicate that you're operating at a high level of consciousness inside of your physical body, and usually it's a sign that you're physically fit and and well. You know, assuming there's no injuries and, and things that are out of your control. Um, you know, so for instance, one of the questions is, uh, you know, are you able to do 50 push-ups? You know, and if not, then it might mean that you're not, you know, taking care of your body. You're not committed to that, you know, that simple little task. That's just go out and do 50 push-ups. Like, like practice doing 50 push-ups, do five a day, 10 a day, uh, 15, 20, get up to 50. Uh, so it does give you a little bit of a, a guidance into what you could be doing inside of uh, operating at a higher level of, of consciousness inside of your body and honoring your body. Uh, so, yeah. The questions basically will lead you down that path to operating uh, in a different way uh, in your body, in your mind, in your relationships, and in your career. 
You know, I can really um, do that. I would do, um, I, I do a lot of HIIT training, high intensity interval training. Um, mm -hmm. And when we used to go to the gyms, yeah, I'd quite often be the person kind of in the front corner who is still going, you know, yet 30, it's only 30 seconds, it's only 40, I'm still going at it all out, you know, the half, the half, the other people in the studio, like flat on the floor, having given up. Um, mm -hmm. I, you know, it, it, aside from the fact I used to be a fitness instructor anyway, so I kind of, I've got that, you know, I, I love it. But I, mm -hmm. I re recognize that I'm so focused on, I, I have to tell myself a thought. It might be that I've only got 20 seconds or I, I associate it with something. So yeah, I might associate it with a, with a desire. I might be visualizing this perfect life or a particular situation that I want a particular outcome. So while I'm doing those 20 seconds all out flat, killing myself or I, <laughs> not quite killing myself, but my mind is focusing on the other thing. And it kind of sounds like it may be similar to almost what you are helping teach people of just say, okay, if you can push yourself in this physical experience to overcome this pain, you could transition mm -hmm. that into your everyday life as well mm -hmm. to overcome this pain or to overcome this challenge. But you've just got to be prepared to push yourself the same way as doing the 50 push-ups and all the negative self-talk and the reasons why you'll, you'll come up with, you know, all the excuses, oh, I'm not strong enough, oh, I'm a woman, I can't possibly do it, oh, I don't have time, oh, I'm too scared, oh, I can't be bothered. It's like, no, you're doing this, you're committing. And then once yes. you do it, how great do you feel? And how can you transition that process that you went through to get you to do it mm -hmm. into another aspect of your life? Yeah, you're nailing it. Yeah, it, just imagine like one of those, those really good days that you had a, an amazing workout and, you know, you're feeling tremendous that night and the next day you're like, man, I killed it. Now take that experience and that feeling and turn it up a thousand percent. And that's what you're going to get by going through the five challenges. And it's residual is years and years and years of, of that feeling regardless of the challenges that you're going through, whether you're going through really high highs or really low lows. Um, you're able to maintain that sense of, of happiness and joy. And, you know, you, you just, it's, it's really, life becomes uh, just, just so clear of how much of a gift it is. And yeah, there's a point in time, and, and this goes back to when I did the Go Ruck Challenge, where, you know, we, we had gone through New York uh, with the weight on our backs and, and it was a 12 hour race. And, uh, uh, at one point, you know, I was, I was in so much pain and so much agony and I looked over and I saw this little flower, you know, on the side of the road and it just, it just, it was brilliant color and, and just amazing. I just picked it up, put it in my hand and this flower, this little flower petal gave me so much joy, so much happiness, you know, even in, in that, that pain and that suffering, so it's finding that joy and that happiness of how tough or how challenging life is. That's stunning. Such a stunning story. I have another question for you with an example for the challenges. So obviously, like you said, it mm -hmm. can go on for years. That sense of joy, you, know, you can tap into it. Mm -hmm. How much, but at the same time, like say you, you mentioned going on an adventure, you know, all mm -hmm. on your own. You just go go walking, go on an adventure all by yourself without the distraction of somebody else. Mm -hmm. uh, which obviously, I mean, that's that's a, cha a real challenge in itself because you have to be within yourself. You, there's a lot of learning, a lot of growing, a lot of need for presence. Um, uh, you, you're just eliminating the distractions. You have to face yourself and you is all you have. Mm -hmm. uh, but what's the process of reflection that happens after that to kind of get you back into the everyday world and in how much reflection do you do you help people get after an experience like that uh yeah that that's that's a good point um there, there was a story that uh that that relates to that when i went in and one of my mentors is uh yannick silver and he's um really amazing individual in in the world and uh, he likes to have a lot of fun he did a, a bar crawl in new york and there were 25 uh, people dressed up as Afro Elvis or Elvises, right? Elvis costumes going through New York, bar hopping, having a great time. And I'm networking with like, some of the top people in the world and, you know, having, having an amazing, amazing experience. And then 
that was like one of those high adventure experiences or like out of, you don't normally do that kind of stuff. Right. And then, um, I get home the next day. I'm like, and I had a wonderful night. I was like meeting all these amazing people. And she goes, can you go and clean up the dog poop in the yard, please? <laughs> and I was like, oh, here's your life again. So uh, it, it, that's a process um, of kind of bringing yourself, integrating yourself into the everyday so that when you do get back into the everyday where you have to, you know, do dishes and, and, take out garbage and shopping and all these other different responsibilities. So there is a process to, to work people through to say, you know, it is okay um, to, to move into these scenarios and not necessarily base your, um, your well-being or your mindset or your success on needing to be out in all in the adventure piece of it the whole entire time. But it's like, hey, it's, it's a, it, this is all part of it. You know, embracing it and and uh, loving the the everyday things as well. Yeah, so there is definitely some some work that I do with individuals uh, to move them through that process and say, you know, it, it, it's okay to have a day where you're just nose to the grind, working your butt off, and and doing the things that you need to do. Um, yes, absolutely. Yep. Yeah, because I, I guess that's maybe, well, maybe that's how the adrenaline junkie sets in. Yeah, well, it, 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 um, Stephen Kotler talks about this, uh, the, the, with the flow state where you go seeking after it, and it could cause these um, ups and downs of your uh, the chemicals in, in your brain and almost like an addictive uh, process. You don't want to get addicted to the, the process of challenging yourself. And um, yeah, there could be this high, 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 and then you get depressed you know, af after it. So you want to be aware of that um, inside of your experiences and uh, kind of anticipate that possibly happening after something like that. And just be like, oh, okay, this is, this is just part of the process. It's part of the, the chemicals in my, in my brain, in my mind, adjusting to the, the different experiences. Um, for me, like I said before, the everyday feels same as like they level it out so when you do it a little bit more and uh you actually the highs aren't as high they, they almost like meet in the middle where like you're very level so you're feeling the same whether you're at home or you're jumping out of a plane or doing whitewater rafting or whatever that experience is it's a very surreal uh experience or, or way to operate in the world it's um uh, what what comes to mind is even even just I, I, my own I know my own experience where um, I get days uh, you know it, and again it's you know it's typically after I say after an adventure where you do have such a high where you can really really plummet and sometimes you, I wake up in the morning and I've just plummeted and I don't even know where it's come from mm -hmm. because usually most of the time I am in that what we, that level six that state of flow that I'm just in the flow you know I'm just this sense of joy nothing can knock me it's it's uh, everything is is all good uh and actually well, the practice i have learned is it not to attach to it mm -hmm. is actually to just to try to let it pass through you because the more we attach to it it's almost the more we we anchor it into us yeah yeah it's so true it, i think it's a question of uh awareness back to awareness consciousness mm -hmm. like understanding like uh, okay this is something that's happening. This is how I'm feeling. It's okay to feel this way. I don't need to make myself feel guilty about it. I don't need to beat myself up. I don't necessarily even need to shift myself out of this right, right away. I can sit in it if I want to, but then it, it's like, well, how long do I want to feel this way? And if it's like, mm, I can shift this. I, I really feel that now is the time to shift it and, and doing something that, that will do that because goes into the difference between uh like pain and suffering you know so do we want to suffer in it or are we able to shift it you know yeah, pain, pain is inevitable suffering is choice absolutely mm -hmm. which you know if you take a little bit of time to to chew on that you understand i've, I've used that on a few people and they're like oh that's a bit heartless and it's like oh, <laughs> you know, think about it you know what what do you want to do you know you do you do the race mm -hmm. right your legs hurt like hell that's your pain but how how much do you want to stew on it or do you want to just 
just accept it, accept the experience, accept what it's learned, what it's taught you, mm -hmm. and then move on. Yeah. And there was, um, during the Go Ruck Challenge, one of the things they said um, is embrace the suck. So that was something that was a profound shift for me is that, you know, instead of trying to get away from that, it's embracing it. It's like, okay, this, this sucks. <laughs> and you know, and I think that's really valid, John, because I think a lot of the time um, we hear people say, oh, I shouldn't be feeling this way. I shouldn't be feeling this way. Or I'm, I'm sure we tell ourselves that, oh, I'm not supposed to be like this. You know, there's no logical reason why I feel like this or, you know, I mustn't. And actually, it's, you know what, let's encourage it. Get it out of your system. Encourage the, the anger, the, the frustration, the, uh, the self-pity. You, you can pick yourself up again afterwards. It's fine. But if you, if you need to express it, then, you know, just because it's energy, isn't it? Just let it, let it go. Let it out of you. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, and if, if, if that piece of you, like for instance, for me, um, you know, that there's, there's pieces of, of us that we want, might want to try and push away, you know, and then we start to become, we, we, we become separated. You know, we talk about parts integration, right? So if we're saying, oh, I shouldn't feel this way, then that part of you it's separated and then you're not a whole you're not acting as a whole person a multi-dimensional dimensional individual and i realized that when i was when i was a few years back when i was getting angry uh, at my kids leaving their, their their toys on on the floor and i'm like i'm not an angry guy like there's no i'm like like oh laid back surfer nice guy and i'm like wow i'm, I'm really angry here you know and when i acknowledged that 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 made me more of a whole person and then realized like well, uh, they're not really disrespect. What, what, what is making me angry? Mm. Well, I feel disrespected. Well, they're not really trying to disrespect me. They're just being kid. You know, like it wasn't that. But the story we tell ourselves around that as well. And so I started to integrate and being okay with, well, yeah, anger is okay. Um, if somebody's ever going after my family or, or I need to step up and, and do something, uh, you know, if I don't have the anger, then you know that could be an even worse situation so anger is okay frustration is okay like they're all okay but you know a lot of us when, when they show up in in what might seem unjustifiable situations that mm -hmm. you question it then we'd encourage people to question it and say well what is it trying to tell you yeah exactly yeah it, it's it's when we hold on to it and it starts turning into that catabolic destructive energy inside of us and then turning into destructive energy uh, towards others as well that's when we got to really look at it and be like well what what am I really doing here am I how, how much am I hurting myself and others and as we know like thoughts uh, can really physically change your your genetic structure you know um it's it's the negative self-talk and, and the things that we we try and push push aside can really physically uh, destroy our health as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So actually, we don't want to hide it in the closet. We okay, let it come out, um, and let's let's take a look at it, and then let's make a choice, a conscious choice of what what we want to do, whether we want to accept it. So that that kind of takes us on to that last bit, which I I, I hold so dear, and I know the the programs I I uh, coach on focus on this a lot which is it's part it's the surrendering part and the the needing to let go because actually it is okay so but we need to let let go of all the bs all the we need to let go of all the negative self-talk the thoughts that we tell ourselves the clutter that may include people <laughs> the forgiveness piece i mean all those things are massive and when you let go of all of that stuff then actually it is limitless. Mm -hmm. You really yeah. are free to move forward. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's well, really back, depending where you see, you know, quantum physics and timelines, but you know. Yeah, I think it really the conversation I think always comes back to that that freedom piece, you know, feeling free. And then um, beyond that is that love, you know. So feeling love for yourself, feeling free, um, those are uh ways of being that I think everybody in this world has a right to, to get to and to feel at whatever stage of that, you know, um, there's a way to do it. And, um, you know, that's why I'm so passionate about getting this workout is that I've created this process 
you know, to get people to that freedom, to get people uh, to that loving state. You know, I've been married for 20 years and uh, it's, it's not by mistake, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's really deepening, having a deep awareness um, of that love and that connection and that consciousness um, through it all, you know, cause we're going through some unprecedented times. And, uh, you know, I think having all the tools that, that we can possibly have at our fingertips and one thing that works for me might not work for you, or maybe you have a technique that works for, for you that'll work for me. And it's all, all experimentation, you know, and the same thing with working out Some people work out and doing CrossFit. Some people do, you know, other things. So the point is to find out what works for you and be open to new experiences and when you find something that works, incorporate it. And then if you have it in your heart, share it with the world because the world will be a better place as a result. Absolutely. The contribution. Mm-hmm. And the intuition. All That's the right. shins. <laughs> as opposed to the shits. <laughs> right. We're out of time, my friend. Um, oh, you and I just keep talking. We keep talking. So yeah. listen, people can connect with you. I know on Instagram, if you wanna, if you wanna find out this this crazy routine that he does, and he's always posting his pictures of you. Oh so God, you're so fit. It's all your adventure stuff. It's brilliant. You can find John on on Instagram. John spelled J O N Christian uh, Jervert. J E R V E R T. Right. Do I spell it right? Because that's that's how you are on on Instagram. But we'd encourage you, please, to go to the website zerkers.com, Z-E-R-K-E-R-S.com. And that's where you can get a link to John's book, which is available on Amazon. So the book is called The Five Challenges. Yep. And they can do the assessment, right? The conscious, conscious human performance assessment. Uh, as well which uh, it sounds absolutely brilliant I think I'm going to do it myself actually absolutely yeah. ah! and, uh, did I get all those links right you did get them all right yeah and yeah but the priority really I'd say go and do the assessment if you want to learn if you want to grow uh, if you want to find out where you are and where the opportunities are in your life you want to think about transitioning then that assessment sounds like the best best place to start and then take the next step and get the book get the get the challenges absolutely and you'll not find it anywhere else in the world no way (laughs) (laughs) okay and of course zerkas when you do start get back to running these events and retreats they can find that out on the on your website absolutely yep that's there as well okay amazing amazing god that's going to be brilliant okay thank you so much for joining me john it's my pleasure thank you so much rana oh it's a lot of fun a lot of fun a lot of freedom overcoming fears brilliant so that's all we have time for. Um, to, uh, please do hit the subscribe button uh, and please do share. Do share because it, it, so many people can benefit from these messages. And But for now, my three last words to you. I am Dr. Rena al Be free, be fun, be fearless. Bye-bye for now. Feel on top of the world with Light Changes Coaching. Do you feel like burying your head in the sand, hoping it will all be fine when you come out? Do you know what you want, but no idea how to get it? Are you stuck on the treadmill, repeating the same old patterns, wishing the answers would just be there for you? How great would it feel to have those answers right there in the palm of your hand? Well, did you know that there is a way to get immediate answers, fast resolution of inner problems and quick access to a higher state of awareness? After 20 years of helping people, I have perfected a special technique that allows you to tap into your intuition. Connect with your intuition in just five minutes a day using this special technique, Dr. Renner's gift technique, the guided intuition and fulfillment training, and you can have those light bulb moments every day. So get what you want, a job that gets you excited when you get up in the morning, a relationship where you can look across the table and think how much you love that person, a body that you're proud to have and look in the mirror and absolutely love, a bank balance that you're not afraid to look at. My gift to you is a simple, quick technique to access your intuition and give you the instant answers you need to get unstuck without having to do lengthy meditations. So head on over right now to lightchangescoaching.com to